Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday, and welcome back to Sunday School. Are you all ready for Sunday School? I can't hear you. Are you ready for Sunday School? Yay! Okay, so let's prepare our heart to listen to the Word of God. Before we begin, let's start with a word of prayer. Can you fold your hands and close your eyes and repeat after me? Our Heavenly Father, we come to your presence today to give thanks to you for all your blessings and guidance. We are thankful for this time to worship you and to learn your word at home. Prepare our heart and give us obedience, humble hearts, and listening ears as we listen to your word. We commit our Sunday school time to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so before we go through the story for today, we are going to talk about one activity that unfortunately we are not able to do right now. But have you ever traveled before? Okay, if you're not so sure what traveling actually means, let's see. Travel, to travel means to go from one place to another. So right now we are in Singapore, right? If we go to Malaysia, it's considered as traveling. Or maybe if we go to Australia, it's also traveling. But if you go from your house to your school, it's not traveling or maybe you go to mall, it's not traveling too. So traveling means you're going to one place where you are right now to another country or another city. Unfortunately, we are not able to travel now due to COVID-19, but who knows, right? Someday we are able to travel or maybe you have a traveling experience before, right? So prayerfully, we can travel again someday. Okay, so I want to show you the world map. Okay, this is the world map. And let's see where are some places we can go and what are the places that we can visit. So let's start with, maybe we go with China. Okay, there's this famous place in China and the place is huge. Okay, it's a, it's a very big wall and it's called the Great Wall. So this wall is very, very long, okay? And, and it goes across mountains. So it's very long and very big. So if you ever travel to China, don't forget to visit the Great Wall, okay? Because it's an iconic place in China. So let's see where else we can visit. Hmm, why don't we move somewhere in Europe, okay? Ah, in France, you will be able to see a beautiful iconic tower that is called Eiffel Tower. And this tower is exactly at Paris. So if you ever go to Paris, France, don't forget to visit Eiffel Tower. It's really tall and it's beautiful. It's very beautiful. It is placed in the center of the city and you should go visit there, uh, visit that tower if you've ever been to Paris. Let's move on to another place. Hmm, maybe we go further down a little bit. Ah, in Africa. Ooh, what's that? Oh, so it's Egypt and in Egypt, you can see a lot of pyramids. And these pyramids are a very iconic place in Egypt as well. And there's a lot of history of this pyramid. And if you go to the desert, you'll be able to see a lot of pyramids. They are shaped in 
a triangular form and it's very big too it's very very big and it's usually placed in a desert full of sand the sand is different from the sand in a beach um it's the sand in the desert so if you ever go to egypt don't forget to visit this place pyramid huh where else can we go why don't we go up there ah there you are anyone familiar with this hmm. does it look like a house or does it look like um pet house or what do you think so it's called eagle eagle is a house shaped like that, like a rounded shaped house. And the interesting thing is, it is made of ice. Now, can you imagine living in a place where it is made from ice? So your house is covered by ice. Well, it's not even covered, it's built by an ice. So it's called Eagle, and it's located in Canada, Central Arctic. So if you ever visit Canada Central Arctic, don't forget to visit this place called Igloo, okay? And yes, people live there. And in fact, they think that living in a house made of ice is not cold, it's warm. Hmm, how does it feel to live in Igloo, right? I'm not too sure too, but hmm, that makes me wonder. Okay, so maybe last place that we are going to visit. Hmm, why don't we go further down again? And hey, what is this? Oh, interesting. Let's see what that is. It is located in Brazil. And oh, it's a, it's a statue of Jesus. It's called the Christ the Redeemer statue. And look at that it's placed on a mountain and it's it looks like jesus hands spread out and like protecting the city isn't that amazing you can see a huge a huge statue of jesus in the middle of the city and it's very tall and it's up there on the mountain wow that's really cool right yeah, I would love to go there too. Would you love to go there? Yes, I hope we can go there someday. So again, you can travel anywhere in this world from the closest to the furthest country there is. And perhaps your first traveling experience would probably be with your parents, your brothers or your sisters, right? Now, let's see if you ever travel what will you bring when you travel let me give you a hint what is this yes you're right the bags or luggage of course you need this right because you need to bring a lot of stuff in and bring it when you go traveling because you need a lot of things what else can you think of Okay, I have some more pictures. What is that? Candies? Do you bring candies when you travel? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe. But this one is medicine. Why do you need medicine? Any guess? Yes, so in case when you're traveling, you fall sick, Maybe you get some flu or maybe uh, you get fever or stomach ache. At least you have your medicine on hand, right? And then you can continue doing your traveling activities, right? So don't forget to bring your medicine. What else? Uh-huh. Yes, a cap. Who knows, right? The place that you are going to is very, very hot like Singapore, then you need a cap, right? What else? Ah, yes, umbrella, correct. 
So you, of course, need to bring an umbrella because if it rains, yes, at least you have umbrella to protect you from the rain. Okay, let's see what other pictures I have. Oh, this is very important. What is this? Passport, correct. So when you travel overseas, going outside the country, maybe going to Australia, going to China, Brazil, then you need passport, right? Otherwise you cannot enter the country. So don't forget to bring your passport. And maybe last one, what is this? Clothes, of course you need to bring clothes. Otherwise you won't, I mean, you cannot just use whatever you have on your body, right? And keep repeating that clothes, right? You have to bring your change. So clothes it is. And there are many, many more things you can bring, right? What else can you bring? Maybe you want to bring your toys, like one of your toys. Or yes, money. You can bring your money as well. And yeah, a lot of things that you can bring when you travel. So don't forget that if you travel, these are the essentials, okay? And depending on the country you visit, take a look at the weather, whether it's hot or it's rainy, then bring your cap or umbrella, okay? So, okay, so today our story will have some relevance to traveling. Okay, and in the past, people also do a lot of traveling, not, not by plane, of course, but by foot, by horse or donkey. So today we're going to talk about the story of when Jesus returns to heaven. And before that, there was a little bit of traveling that Jesus did. Okay. So let me recap the story about the journey of Jesus Christ. So after Jesus was crucified, he rose from the dead. And for 40 days after his resurrection, he appeared from time to time to the apostles. He ate with the apostles. He shared the gospel with the apostles. And he, he had good quality time with um, the disciples. And although Jesus has resurrected, some people still wouldn't believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead. So he had to prove to them in many ways that it really, really was him they were seeing. And eventually he came back to, um, to live. On this occasion, when um, he was on earth 40 days after he resurrected from the dead, he liked to talk uh, about the kingdom of God. So he shared about the kingdom of God with his disciples while they were eating and make sure that the disciples understand about the kingdom of God. Now, during one of these meetings, he told them not to leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them. This was to fulfill God's promise, a matter he had previously discussed with, with them. So Jesus said, John baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit in just a few days. Now, what does Jesus actually mean? Who is this Holy Spirit? Like, when will this Holy Spirit appear? And after Jesus talked about this, then one day, Jesus told his disciples, hey, let's take some time to travel. We are not going very, very far. We are just going to travel to a place outside Jerusalem, another city. There's this mountain called Mount of Olives. Let's take a, let's take a walk. Um, let's use this time to talk and to discuss things. So let's travel and let's have quality time together. So while Jesus was traveling, remember, uh, when we talk about traveling, they walk around and they see things, right? Then in the middle of the journey, one of them asked, Lord, are you going to free Israel from Rome now and restore us as an independent nation? Because it's been a while since the Roman Empire 
controlling our nation, Israel. Now, before we continue with this story and to know what answer Jesus gave, does anyone know why this person asked Jesus this question? Why does this person ask when will well, he free Israel from Rome? No, not too sure. Okay, I will give you a background story of why this person is asking about freeing Israel from Rome. So in the past, before Jesus came to the world, the Romans, the Roman Empire, okay, there's a lot of armies and there's a lot of uh, like ruling people. They control all the people in Israel, Israelites, okay? And the Israelites wanted a savior and God did promise them that a savior would come, would come and save them. But no one actually knew who it would be. So the Israelites actually wanted the savior to be a king, a king like King David, who can win wars, who can free them from enemies, who can make all the Roman empires go away and give, give back the Israel people just for their just for them and not controlled by the Romans anymore but guess what they are wrong they are wrong what God meant about the savior is not savior to free the Israel but savior for all humans to free humans from sin and that savior is Jesus Christ the Savior is actually just in front of their eyes. That Jesus Christ is the Savior. That is why the person asked Jesus a question. When will we be free from the Romans? But Jesus never, but God never promised the Savior will be a king, like the king who win wars, but the king of all kings who are more powerful to help all humans from their sins and that person is Jesus himself so when that person asked Lord are you going to free Israel from now from Rome now and restore us as an independent nation then Jesus said the father said those dates and they are not for you to know so even Jesus did not know when that happened because that Savior is already there, that Savior that God actually meant to save the, all the humans from sins is already there. Jesus himself saving the, um, the people from their sins, but they don't understand. They don't understand. And Jesus continues sharing about the Holy Spirit that will come. He said, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power to testify about me with great effect to the people in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the, or, or, the ends of the earth about my death and resurrection. So please wait for this Holy Spirit and this Holy Spirit will help you. And soon afterwards, suddenly, Jesus rose into the sky and disappeared into cloud, leaving them staring after him. So all the clouds, uh, all the clouds surrounding Jesus, and suddenly Jesus was taken to the sky and he disappeared. So that's when Jesus ascended to heaven. And as they were stare, staring at Jesus, it strained their eyes for another glimpse. And suddenly, two white robed men were standing there among them. They said, Man of Galilee, why are you standing here staring at the sky? Jesus has gone away to heaven, and someday, just as he went, he will return. So these are the voices of angels telling them that Jesus has gone back to heaven? And someday Jesus will return. Okay. And the disciples, 
walk the journey back to Jerusalem and held a prayer meeting in an upstairs room of the house where they were staying. And at the prayer meeting, there were Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, Simon, Judas, and brothers of Jesus. Several women, including Jesus' mother, were also there. They were gathered in a prayer meeting, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. And that's the end of the story. And we just heard that Jesus already went back to heaven. And right now, he's already in heaven. And waiting for the and we right now are waiting for his second coming that's why we have to prepare our heart and be faithful to him until he came back for the second time so what have we learned today jesus has completed his task on earth and returned to heaven and his return to heaven happened when he traveled to mount olive with his disciples and where is he now Yes, right now, Jesus is in heaven, and he will return on the second coming. And even though Jesus is already in heaven, the Holy Spirit came down to earth to enable us to serve, trust, and obey God. He does not leave us. Although we cannot see the Spirit, he, watch, he watches over us and takes care of us always be with us and help us to um to serve him all the time so that's the end of the story today and i hope you learn that uh, jesus is always with us his holy spirit always guide us and we pray that we always be faithful to him and today's um memory verse is taken from act Chapter 1, verse 11b. So why don't we read this memory verse together? One, two, three. This same Jesus will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 11b. Let's read this one more time. This same Jesus will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Acts chapter 1, verse 11b. Okay, so remember what the angel said, that he will come back, and he will come back in the same way he went back to heaven. Okay, so we will recite our catechism. And today's catechism will be taken from uh, question 16 to question 20. Okay, let's read this catechism together. Who are our first parents? Adam and Eve. Let's read this one more time. Who are our first parents? Adam and Eve. Next question. Of what were our first parents made? God made the body of Adam out of the ground and formed Eve from the body of Adam. One more time. Of what were our first parents made? God made the body of Adam out of the ground and formed Eve from the body of Adam. 18. What did God give Adam and Eve besides bodies? He gave them souls that could never die. Let's repeat again. What did God give Adam and Eve besides bodies? He gave them souls that could never die. Number 19. Have you a soul as well as a body? Yes. I have a soul that can never die. One more time. Have you a soul as well as a body? Yes, I have a soul that can never die. Last one. How do you know that you have a soul? Because the Bible tells me so. One more time. How do you know that you have a soul? 
because the Bible tells me so. Great. So that is the end of um, our catechism and our story. Let's pray in closing prayer and sing the psalogy. So let's pray first and we will sing the psalogy at the end. Let's close our eyes and fold our hands and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we once again thank you for your word that we heard today. We thank you, Lord, for coming down to earth to save us from sins and for sending your Holy Spirit to help us to trust, obey, and serve you. May you guide us to live according to your word and be faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's sing the psalogy together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Okay, so that concludes our Sunday School today. Don't forget to do your activity. See you next week. Have a blessed Sunday and God bless you all. Bye-bye.